Hey, everybody. Really fascinating discussion in the lead up to RSAC with Rubric. Noam, how are you? Hey, Evan. I'm good. Really, really, really nice being here today. Looking forward to our discussions. I am as well. Before we dive into all things Rubric, maybe introduce yourself, your journey, which, you know, fascinating journey to Rubric and how that kind of experience shaped your perspective, philosophy about data security. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I spent many years in the security space uh, doing research from the intelligence and being all the way through R&D departments. And then I joined a startup called Laminar in DSVM space, where I joined day one. And, you know, day one, you join a startup, there isn't uh, much to do, but just write a bunch of code and, and start <laughs> developing and building the product. One thing that I loved right off the bat was talking to customers, understanding what they need. So, you know, being a startup, you do anything. I was the support. I, every customer had my, my personal number at the start and, and pre-sale and events and anything to deal with, with customers. We truly built an amazing thing, technology um, as the DSPM space group and really had the privilege of being acquired by Rubrik. Now, you know, a lot of people ask, well, how's, how's the journey with Rubrik? How is it going? And people tend to say the generic, well, yeah, it's all good. It's, it's, it's nice. It's exciting, some people might say. But, but I say I'm thrilled with what we're doing with Rubrik. I, I, it's an amazing company, brilliant people. And one thing that coming from a startup that you're really concerned about, I was concerned about is, can we keep the pace of innovation? And truly proud and, and, and really happy to say that we are. And we're, we're moving faster than we moved. And I have the privilege of working with a team that's taking new products to market, incubating products and working with the vast, um, very wide, um, say, call it, crowd of the, of the rubric market and customers. Fascinating. So many hot buttons, hot topics to talk about. So I'm, I'm wondering where to start. But one thing you talk about it's, is not, you know, when, but, you know, not if, rather, but when a breach happens. Right. Um, what's your philosophy around preparing for and responding to uh, a full attack and uh, against a really difficult timeline? Right. Yeah, I think uh, it's a great question. So Rubrik at, it, at its core protects data. So Rubrik is built as a data security platform that expands from on-prem, SaaS, and cloud workloads. And when we say being resilient, we break it down into two. One thing is being able to recover from a breach. Because when, when as you mentioned, it's not about the if it will happen, it's, it's when it will happen. It's when you'll be hit, when the systems will be down, can you recover, can you bounce back? But one thing that will help you speed up the recovery process and lowering the impact of the breach is if you do prepare, right? For example, if you analyze your data risks, if you know what data you have, if you minimize access to, to data, you can enhance your preparedness or essentially what it will do is it will lower the impact of the breach and will help you to respond faster to that breach. So the rubric philosophy is we are not your go-to tool that will put and try to prevent an attack. We say to our customers, truly, it's about assuming that you will be attacked and you will be breached. And how can you bounce back as fast as possible? Yeah, really well said. You've also talked a lot about data sprawl. It's such, such a hot topic as the world moves to multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, private cloud environments. How do you define data sprawl these days? What, you know, what should uh, leaders be paying attention to? Yeah. Um, so when thinking about data sprawl, 
think about moving into cloud. I think this this truly accelerated what we see today as data sprawl. So COVID, cloud cloud before COVID, but COVID definitely accelerated cloud adoption. And when organizations were starting to use cloud, they were starting to see the benefits of cloud, which was it allowed data democratization, more people could use more data. And this was even before the AI boom that we're experiencing now. So AI is, in terms of thinking about data, we, we want to use the data even more. So it just enhances the, the data, that data sprawl. So it has a lot of advantages, and we see how it's really powering everything to do with AI today. But this data sprawl also puts organizations at risk. Because if you don't know what data you have and you don't know where it is, then you don't know how that data is secured. So today, especially with moving into cloud and even in 365 environments, we just see, say, data stores like S3 or sometimes your SharePoint just being dumping grounds for data. And it's really difficult to keep track of what data we have and how is that data being used? Who is accessing it, right? So we see this data sprawl as a brilliant, not, it doesn't need to be just a negative aspect because data sprawl means more people can use more data and can be more productive, but it definitely puts organizations at risk today. Interesting. So you've also talked about identity being the new perimeter, um, you know, with so many kinds of identities, machine identities, the definition is increasing. So what does it mean in a, in a practical day-to-day -day sense for organizations trying to secure their cloud? No, 100%. Uh, so it's, it's actually, it was very exciting. So today we announced that Rubrik is really stepping in into the identity space. And, and mm -hmm. why is that? If you, the way I started is saying data is, is, at, is at our core. But what is today's entry point into that data? Right. So attackers are after data, obvious. But how are they getting to that data? And you look at the industry today and with speaking to, to our customers, identity today is the main path to, to data. And if we want to secure the data in a better manner, we want to be able to secure the identity as well. And, and it comes in, in both ways. The way I look at it is in one aspect, if you want to secure the data, you want to ask, well, who can access this data? How can that data be leaked? If many of the attacks are happening through the, the identity, then I want to understand well, which are the identities that can access this data. The other, on the, on the flip side, if I want to look at all the identities in my org, and I saw, Evan, that, that you, you mentioned the Okta conference the other day, what many of the solutions that deal solely with identity are missing is the data component. Mm. So you can see all the identities, but which ones truly can impact sensitive data? And that's something unique that Rubrik is bringing to the table now. And, and truly exciting, we just released an announcement, would urge anyone of viewers to, to just have a look at what we're doing with, with combining identity and data. So now, that's really interesting. So, 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 yeah. yeah sorry, I'll, I'll just interrupt because I, you know, how how do you know what data is critical, where it lives, and how important it is? Because there's, you know, I guess all data is not created equally. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So Rubrik has a classification engine, and that classification mm. engine can classify unstructured, structured, semi-structured data, whether it lives on prem, cloud, or or SaaS. Now. When we think about identities, and Evan, you, you mentioned it, it's not just your, when we think of identities, we think about your users and groups, but what we're seeing today, and again, AI is enhancing it, enhancing the problem through non-human identities, right? Through machines, through, it could be agents that would be using tokens to authorize, authenticate against that data. And again, that sprawl, that this now identity sprawl will make it more difficult to prioritize which machines are actually accessing sensitive data. And then again, by combining analyzing the identity and also classifying the data, being able to separate 
whether it be your PHI, PCI, PII, but also what is specifically sensitive to the business by, be, by being able to classify all this data, we combine the two in a way that has not been seen yet by the industry. Wow, very cool. So big conversation you, you haven't heard years ago, and it's become a, a board level uh, conversation is around resilience. You've seen so many careers, even companies ended by breaches. Um, how do you fit into this new discussion around cyber resilience? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think back in the day before I joined, Rubrik disrupted the backup space by allowing for uh, safe, faster, and resilient backup. But this, the conversations were usually being held literally down, you know, at the basement with the, the, the backup person that they cared about the, 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 the backup. The problem is, and what presented a great opportunity for Rubrik is that with cyber attacks and with ransomware, when organizations tried to bounce back from a cyber attack, trying to recover the data store, recover, say, the VMs, mm -hmm. they would reinfect the malware. Oh. Right? So you're saying, okay, systems are down. Now you have your backup. Okay, we're good. You would, organizations would reintroduce, reinfect the backups. So the opportunity came from Rubrik customers asking Rubrik, hey, can you help identify a clean copy? So the jump that Rubrik made, the leap that Rubrik made from being a backup vendor to being an essential part of a resilient strategy is we, A, we back off your data, but if you're hit by a cyber attack, if you're hit by a ransomware, Rubrik will help you to quickly see that it's, that it's happening, identify the anomaly as it's happening, and also being able to identify a clean copy, identify a clean state, and recover to that state. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible proposition. So let's talk about AI, another hot topic at RSAC and beyond. Um, obviously changing the way hackers operate, giving them superpowers. But what about the defenders? What are the opportunities there for your customers and in, and in general, the industry? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a fascinating topic. And Rubrik's proud to really remember going back to the beginning of, of our discussion. Rubrik's truly innovating in all fronts. So we're combining data with security with AI. And uh, another release that we've made is, is around the Annapurna release. And what Project Annapurna for Rubrik does is, is very basic for our customers. Since Rubrik back up all of this customer data, one of the biggest challenges that we see with adoption of safe AI is if you allow, say, an LLM model to run against your data, how do you limit the access that this LLM module has? Mm. How do you know what it runs against? So what we did with Rubrik is we built a layer on top of the data that's being backed up by Rubrik so that you can run your models and you can limit what data they, they can access, who can access this data on top of data that's already being backed up. So also the collection of data, you don't need to go in and, and collect all this data. It's already available for our customers in Rubrik. Now, in terms of what I think the industry is, is going, it, it's fascinating what we're seeing with MCP. I think it's driving everyone crazy, the opportunities. Um, for whoever doesn't like, hasn't heard about MCP real quick, I, I just view it as the move from LLMs chatbots to AI agents, I'm just gonna break it down, is an LLM and a chatbot, the interface is simply a chat and the input output is me putting text and expecting the output to be textual as well. Mm -hmm. The move into agents is those LLMs can now have different connectivities to multiple, to other LLMs, different data stores. MCP is a new protocol that simply standardize, standardizes all the interactions, all the APIs between it could be agent to agent, 
an agent to data store. So this brings the potential for perhaps security practitioners to connect their LLMs into multiple data stores and to become more efficient when trying to tackle security risks. So think of if you want to be able to scan multiple sources and to, to, inter, to, to, to really bring it all together into one place, then you could have perhaps connect to GitHub, perhaps connect to Splunk, see the events and correlate. Now that has nothing to do with rubric, but it truly excites me on the AI space and to see where we're headed with that. So MCP, again, brings new opportunities, but brings a lot of risks as well. New API, a new attack surface. So truly interesting to see what's going to happen there. On top of being a backup service, being more efficient and having a lower cost, so a lower TCO for our customers in cloud, we can also help our customers identify by tying in the classification engine that we mentioned. We can also help our customers identify what data they have in cloud so they don't try to go ahead and back up everything, right? This mm. context, before the context, we tied into identity. But if we look at cloud backup, we tie this knowledge of data. Well, perhaps you don't need to back up everything. Or perhaps you, don't, you can back up things in what we call different SLAs. I don't need to back everything every day if it's not as critical. I can maybe back it up every, every month or every six months if it's not critical at all. Maybe I don't need to back it up at all and I can delete the data and spare the cost altogether. So this is something that Rubrik brings to the table with much more efficient and smart cloud backup. And again, it's using all the power and innovation of, of, of Rubrik being able to handle cloud data at scale and also being able to identify what data needs to actually be backed up. Wow, fantastic. So we're heading to RSAC. Any any uh, tips or tricks or plans you want to share for you, you've been many times, as have I, I guess yeah. besides good walking shoes and uh, lots of water, what, what, what other, other uh, uh, advice would you give attendees? So f for me, it's it, honestly, I'm sometimes very intimidated by all the noise. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. And then I just ask people about it, how they handle it. What I find super effective is to, to simply focus on three talks that I want to participate in and mm. really want to listen and not to be distracted uh, scrolling through my phone through the talks. Because if I <laughs> sign up to, to 10, then I know, well, I have the next one. So really focus on, on the talks that you want to participate in. And on the floor at the expo, focus on three vendors that you mm. are truly intrigued about. I mean, I, it's crazy, right? We all want to join some raffle and, 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 and there are so many demos and, and, and vendors trying to pull everyone in. Um, what I even try to do, and I use this as a learning opportunity, I will be at the, at the floor uh, working at the rubric booth. But I do try to step out, focus on three vendors, ones that, that truly excite me, the smaller ones, but also the big ones. What are they saying? What are they seeing? Um, so I would recommend, obviously, go ahead and, and see what we have at the Rubric booth. You'll love what we're doing with identity, combining it with data. That's me being biased. But, but with, all, with all fairness, truly, focus on, on the vendors that, that you want to see. and and the ones that you don't even know about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always fun discovering things, but it's, it's also good to go with a plan. I create a Google Doc that has just everything I'm planning to do in one place and contact and emails and saves you a lot of time and, and, uh, and scrolling through emails and texts and other things. So good luck to us all, and we'll for see you sure. next week. Okay. Thank you. Evan. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening, everyone, and watching.